Damn people 2022! Come on down! Yes! I am Jesse Ray Ernster and we're here at the Auto-Tune booth. So we're gonna start, I'm just gonna play maybe an intro a verse. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know what this, to this tune is all about. We'll kind of get our levels going. Sing my own harmonies. Alright, we're in the pre. Moving into the hook now. That's the record. Really cool jam. We got some claps. We got big production. This is produced by a guy named Justice West, good friend of mine, awesome dude. We're gonna start with the vocal because there are some opportunities to to kind of uh, yeah, tune it up. You know what? No, we're going. We're, <laughs> we're gonna change that. We're not going with the vocal right off the bat. We are gonna jump into the B G V's. I want to show you how we can mix creatively and make some arrangement changes using Auto Tune. So if we check this out, I'm going to make groups enabled. We'll be able to hear what these background vocals are doing on this section. Okay, so we've got them. But to me, the song isn't actually calling for that. If we listen to the record, the instrumental is doing this. Right? So in there, this is where we get to kind of pull these ones up. These four vocals are making the chord sus. It's addressing a four on the middle note instead of a three. And the instrumental's playing too, dang it. Ah, this is why I need link track and edit selection. Yes, thank you. We want that to go that's gonna be the red note that the chord is being addressed by the instrumental at that part of the song. It's gonna sound so beautiful once we make that change. Let's do it. We're gonna jump into audio suite, pitch shift, auto tune pro. Who's got auto tune pro out there? This is a good one. This is the screen everybody's most familiar with. I go way, 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 way back to the kind of OG auto tunes where we didn't even have auto mode, it was graph mode. Well, maybe auto mode existed. It wasn't very great at the time. This was like 2001, 2002. No offense, I think there was different ownership, different guys building the plugins, right? Yeah, maybe some, okay. <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay, key of this song, we could use auto key. Uh, to be honest, that's not part of my workflow. I just don't do it, I'm old school. So we're gonna go E major. I'm in audio suite mode. We're gonna pull up the first one. We're gonna take a look. We're gonna hit track, pitch. I'm gonna zoom in. Zoom in, baby pitch and then we're gonna hit this little sound on button all right there it is it's gonna now we can stop it we're gonna loop the little region I'm gonna hit this little button whatever that one is called I don't really know we're gonna go instead of oh snap crackle pop and then a, a double click to complete it and it kind of helped it drew in it assisted it just beautifully. There used to be this pencil tool. You would have to kind of do that stuff manually. It was, it was, I did it. We still did it, you know? Now let's hear what we have. Right? Okay, a little finicky going into it. I'm okay with it. That's gonna work. In the mix, grand scheme of things, if we just get some results and we keep moving, we're never gonna hear that. I like to go to overwrite files. That's the way I do it. We're gonna hit render, non-destructive, and this trackpad speed is actually like killing my vibe. So we're gonna go into trackpad. We're gonna we're gonna go s tracking speed much faster. I ain't got time for slow stuff. Okay, cool. And we're gonna pop down. We just rendered that, right? Now we're gonna hit this. We're gonna just copy the exact thing to the next parts because I know that she's such a tight vocalist. It's gonna work. We're going for speed. They're built for speed, not for comfort, ladies and gents. Let's go. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's hear how that's sounding as a group. Uh, 
kind of cool. I'm actually going to modify this next one down, though, too. I don't know if you guys can hear that. He's going, ah. Instead of that, we're going to go, ah. And this is where we can use the scissors tool to actually put a break in. Because unlike the other step where she went to three different notes, it was easy to see. Here, we're going to see where it flutters, but it's going to be straight. We're going to be able to use the scissors to chop it. And we're going to move just that one with the exact same tool. We'll pull it back up with our hotkey. We're gonna go back to graphic mode, tracking pitch. La, la, la. There, and you can see where the chord changes. That's where she breaks. That's where we're gonna, actually we won't use the scissors tool, I lied. We're gonna go la. So from there, we'll make it quiver on down. We'll give it a gradual slope, and that's going to be a natural sounding vocal move, right? So we go down, down, and then all the way up here to the next note. Double click to finish it off. Let's hear how it sounds. I was a little too slow on the, on the slope. We're going to undo. We're going to do it one more time. Track pitch. Actually, no, the pitch is track. Yeah, there we go. OK, we're going to go much quicker, and then up. Double click to finish, perfect. I know it's gonna work, we don't even have to preview it. Render, going down to the next track, render. Going down to the next track, render. There's probably a shortcut for going down the tracks like this. Oops, escape, undo. Okay, and then we'll go here, we'll do the same thing. Now, listening to the entire group. Love. We've completely made that happen. It's a cool thing. We'll hear it in the mix. Follows the chords now. It's a cool thing. I'm going to make a new instrument track now to kind of demonstrate the MIDI that we did. We have MIDI Grand installed. We do. This is cool. The factory content was not. Okay. We're not going to do that. That's okay. <laughs> we'll have something. We'll have something. Instrument, instrument, anything that can do some. MIDI. That'll do it. Okay. Record that. Ah, they don't have... Okay, cool. I need my multi-tool and engaged as well. Okay, now I'm just going to quickly draw in what that was. One, two, three, four. Dun. Dun, dun, dun. Right? Dun. We'll set up a little loop of this part. Where are you, loop playback? Come on. Command shift L, let's go, let's go. Loop oh yeah, we got it. But we'll loop all of that, it'll be good. I think it goes on for this whole thing. Sorry for the hiccup here. I got my timing wrong on that one, but that's okay. And then we're going to go. And another underneath. You'll see what I'm going to do with this MIDI, everybody. And I came in a little, a little hot on that one, too. There we go. We'll just drag these guys over. I'm slow on MIDI. Here we go. It's going to work out just fine. Okay, now with that, now I've figured out the notes. It's cool. We're going to drag this on down. And here's what we're going to kind of do to simulate and fill out these harmonies even more. A little bit of a hiccup. You guys still with me? Okay, cool. We drew the MIDI. We, you know, reflecting back, we had a, we had a little bit of time wasted on the MIDI. Maybe 30... 30, 40 seconds too long on the MIDI when I'm looking back on it. A little bit of a regret, regret in my mind, but it's okay. We're going to make up for it by going super fast on the next spot. So here we go into super speed mode, 200%. Here we go. <gasps> Duplicate of the lead vocal. Oh my gosh, now we're going to make it with the harmony engine. Here we go really fast. Ah. And now we're going too fast. That's the thing. Harmony engine. So we're going to go down to MIDI Omni. And we're going to take out the lead. Where is that one? Mute, mute the input. We don't even want the lead. 
we're going to treat this second red track like it's a cool kind of MIDI chordal thing. And we're going to actually send the output of our MIDI to Harmony Engine Channel 1. So it's going to detect the MIDI we use there to make harmonies. And it's going to fill everything out gorgeously. Check this out. Right? Right? Okay, I just need to figure out how we get that. MIDI Omni, it should have worked. Should have worked. Lead one. Lead one. Oh. Well, you know what? In this scenario, we're just going to mute it because we already have the harmonies. Because Jesse couldn't figure it out. That's okay. It sounds dope. Everybody, close your eyes for a second. Three, two, one. Pretend that Jesse got the Harmony engine to work. In three, two, one, you're suddenly you're going to open your eyes. We're going to have a round of applause for the Harmony engine because it is dope and it was my fault. Three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> Harmony engine is sick. Listen to how it sounds. Okay, this is cool. This works out really nicely. Something wrong with the track, in my opinion. Here's something in, in the beat. Let's take a look at the instrumental. This is honestly where I end up using auto-tune more often than anything. Because uh, I'm a mixing engineer, I usually get sessions, I get vocals that already sound tuned and they already sound great. So a lot of the time I'm not even editing that stuff. But drums will come in kind of off key from the song, they'll distract. Basses will come in out of key because a lot of these, these, these uh, machines and, and samplers that, that make 808s, they'll be a little out of key. You gotta kind of go in and doctor that stuff. So here's a good example of that. Listen to this snare track here. It's playing a two. It's playing two semitones up from the key of the song. E major, boom, ba, ba. I would love it to play E instead of a G flat. So we're gonna pull up Auto Tune Pro. Pro is my favorite version of Auto-Tune. And I just want to do a little bit of transpose there. Let's hear how, how much cooler that's going to sound. Are we going to bring it down, I think? It could work. Maybe we go for the third. That's cool. Yeah, major third. That feels just musical now. So now the snare is not just a transient kind of just item of noise to add to the rhythm of the song. It's contributing to the melodic content and the, the substance. It's giving, you know, we, we, had a, we had a plate with some mashed potatoes and some, some grilled chicken, some, maybe some corn. Are you a corn guy? Corn? You lo he loves corn. Maybe some peas. My daughter has a, has a legume allergy, so instead of the, the peas, we do the corn. So we had a good plate of food. Now we're going to put some gravy on top of that bad boy. We need the sauce all over the plate. So we're, we're, we're going to get some of that going here. Uh, here's like a little cheat code. Here's another thing. Switching gears. Jesse Ray Ernster here with some of the most severe ADHD you've probably ever heard of. That's, that's me right here. And that's the uh, overall underlying theme of this demonstration here today. But we're going to jump around yet again to adding color to the instrumental. Let's listen to what this instrumental sounds like without anything on it. It's cool, right? Check this out though. We got a little dial with some tube saturation and the tubes light up. Oh my gosh. It's great. It's a, dude, it's a good little animation. I love it. It definitely, people don't talk about the mic mod thing and this is not the intended purpose for this plugin, but check out what happens when we turn up the tube drive. Okay, we're going a little bit too far, right? It got a little crumpled, that's okay. Let's back that baby down. I like to impose a little bit of practice. This is a, a practice that I do, it's called eyes closed and ears open. So I'm gonna hit the command button so I can do a little bit of a fine tune slide adjustment. I'm just gonna listen, I'm gonna close my eyes and just go for it. I'm gonna put it where it belongs. It adds 
such a growl. We got Beethoven the dog in there just. This is an incredibly beautiful sounding plugin. We got to trim it down a little bit. It's going to be a little too loud for the vocal now. Let's unsolo this bad boy. Again, eyes closed, ears open. I'm going to move this fader. We're going to get this thing just sitting right where it's supporting the vocal and it's right behind it. You know, if we want to go Chris Lord Algae, we might find a chair nearby. We might put like a foot up on the chair, get the butt out, just start doing a little dance while we're mixing. You know, looking around like... Let's bypass it. A little quiet. Again, this artist is Joliet Four, number four. She's awesome, incredibly talented. We were gonna put auto-tune on her vocal. As you can hear, she's a really great vocalist. Uh, you might say, man, there's hardly a need for that, but there are some spots. So I'm just gonna go in, we're gonna do a little E major, and I'll give you right now the, just kind of the go-to preset that I go for. I do a retune speed of 40, I do a flex tune at 60. I call it, you know, it's the opposite of the 60-40 rule. It's going to be just a 40-60 rule. This basically is just foolproof. It's never going to be fe so fast that it'll catch the, the it'll catch the weird stuff and make the performance sound artificial. But on great singers, it's just enough for when they sustain notes that it's just going to hold them in if they ever fall off slightly. Yeah, it's a really, really natural setting. I love it. Let's boost her up. It's just, it's loud in here. We're going to bring her vocal up. It's perfect. It's perfect. And you can hear that the vibratos are still happening. They're in there. They're not being deterred or like you know neutered and clamped down and, and making it just completely artificial it's great this is uh this is how i use autotune that, that's kind of that's kind of the deal there any questions